from me and Inky and Inky is going to help me out and make some vegan marshmallows, aren't you? So these are my vegan marshmallow seals and they're from my book Christmas with Kim Joy um, and I'm going to share with you the recipe though because I'm nice and I want to share with you these and I think it's great that they're vegan because then um, everyone can eat it and you don't feel guilty at all. So I'd say this recipe is a little bit technical in its trickiness because um, you need to get you need a thermometer to make sure your sugar syrup is at the right temperature um, otherwise it will go badly wrong um, and ideally like a stand mixer just because you've been whipping that marshmallow for a long time but other than those things I don't think this recipe is too tricky but these are super soft and fluffy and so ingredients, I've got some aquafaba in this bowl, so that is from, drained from like a can of chickpeas, it's all brine in there, and that is going to be whipped up to replace egg whites and make the marshmallows nice and fluffy. And in here is caster sugar, so of course you need sugar, and some vanilla, make it taste really nice. And then also to make it set, I've got some agar agar powder, also some water which you'll need and some liquid glucose stops that sugar from crystallizing um, and in America you don't call it liquid glucose you call it like glucose glucose syrup something like that <laughs> um, and then also some cream of tartar and some sandalwood gum that helps give it the right texture and just a little bit of salt because it makes all sweet things taste a little bit better and then in here it's just corn flour and icing sugar mixed together the same weight of icing sugar, same weight of corn flour, um, and that's just going to be sieved onto your like tray to stop the marshmallows from sticking. So that is all the ingredients. <laughs> oh hello! Are you having a look? Are you going to come help? Inky is very helpful, aren't you, Inkle? You like seals, don't you? So the one thing with making marshmallows at home is they're a little bit like equipment well you need a stand mixer ideally you can probably do it without but it involves a lot of whisking and really helps with your stand mixer and then two pans small ones ideally this is a massive pan but I can't find them my cupboards my kitchen cupboards are like full of pans so I can't be bothered to dig out so I've got 150 grams slash milliliters of water in here and I'm going to add half of it into this pan that's 75 grams of weighing it on a weighing scale and a teaspoon and I'm going to get my agar agar powder just so it dissolves Come here! Come on! What are you doing? Okay, so that's whisked and all dissolved now I'm just going to set it aside for now don't need it for a little while and then to this pan I am adding all of my caster sugar and then I'm adding my liquid glucose which is essential, stops it crystallising, makes it a lot easier. I just cut off the top, it makes it. otherwise squeezing it through the other end takes forever. A little pinch of salt. Okay, and then add the rest of your water, so it's another 75 grams of water. So that right there is going to go onto my stove hob, and I'm just going to heat that up, But and then I'm going to come back here and show you what I'm doing. There's like two things you've got to coordinate all at once. So you've got to heat this like 118 degrees Celsius. Oh, I'm going to put that down. <laughs> Making my arm ache. not got any strength in my left arm. Um, so yeah, you've got to heat this to 118 degrees Celsius on the hob and then at the same time you're going to whip up your aquafaba and stuff in here and you need to time it so that's at the temperature and then that in there is reaching stiff peaks. So now to my sandai mixer bowl, I'm adding my aquafaba. I think you can smell it, can't you? Smell funny. Right, and then you're going to add your cream and tartar, so it's just a teeny teeny little bit, it's like a little oh, one eighth of a teaspoon, just a pinch, and then some xanthan gum, which kind of helps it be a little bit more, um, it's 
like stretchy. Agar agar, I don't know if you've used it before, but it goes like quite crispy. And um, when you bite into it, it's very different texturally to gelatin. So these aren't exactly the same as gelatin ones, but the, <laughs> the xanthan gum helps it to um, just be a bit more softer and not so like, you know, bitey, like crisp. Right. So I am just going to whip this on maximum, but I can slow it down a little bit just to time it with the um, sugar syrup, get into the right temperature, but just don't stop it completely. Um, yeah, put it on really slow to slow it down, but don't stop it completely. I just said that, but I'll say it again just so you know. It's very important. <laughs> okay, so it's gonna whiz. Okay! Oh, turn that off so you can hear me. My sugar syrup is at temperature. Now I'm gonna pour it in whilst the mixer is whisking on low. so I can chat but I'm just going to turn it on to high now and whisk on high speed until it's nice and it will go bolliness and fluffy. I keep forgetting to say stuff whilst the mix is off. Um, and so next I'm going to get my, you know, my pan from earlier. With this one, so the one that I put the agar agar powder and some water in. So that is going to go onto the hob and I'm just going to cook it for a minute or so so that it's warm and it'll be like, so it bubbles for about a minute and then I'm going to put it in here. So I have just cooked this for like a minute or so and it is thicker than it was before so it's sort of more gelatinous whereas before it was just water and agar powder so that's how you know it is done. So yeah just about a minute of boiling in a pan on high heat. Ooh, there I am. <laughs> so simply just Scoop all the agar agar out of your pan and pop it into there and it should just all melt in when you whisk it again. Okay, that's all in, so now you just whisk it. It's definitely stiffening, so it's not as fluid and runny as it was before, um, but you do need to whisk it for quite a while to get it to like on the whisk you know it's not dropping down it's staying on there but you know you can still move it out a little bit it's not completely stiff um, yeah put it on the spatula you can see it holds some height on there and there's a bit of a drip but it's not flowing unless I shake it and then it falls down so that looks perfect to pipe with Oh, and also you can add your vanilla bean paste at this stage or any flavorings that you want to add to your marshmallows. I will add it whilst it's whisking towards the end. So I'd add like a good tablespoon, you know, make it taste nice, but I run out. So I'm just gonna add a little bit, but it'll give it some nice like vanilla bean flex. It'll look lovely. Okay, so all we're gonna do is scoop all of this Fluffy, fluffy marshmallow into my piping bag. Scoop it right in there. You need a little bit more to put into another piping bag so you can pipe the sealed snouts. So, baking paper, and I'm going to cover, or you can use like a tray, like a baking tray, but um, I'm just going to use some baking paper cover it all with some oil and then just sieve over your corn flour and icing sugar Ooh, not that much <laughs> corn flour and icing sugar mix but yeah you can be really like generous with it you want to be generous with it just to make sure your uh, marshmallows don't stick and they have 
you know, they dry out nicely and so not still wet. So cover it completely. Nice snow. And then the rest is to sieve onto the top. So leave some for now. Knit the tip of your piping bag like a reasonably large tip, maybe about there. And then you're just gonna pipe by squeezing the bag and making sure it's nice and round, big at one end, and then taper off towards the end. And go along and keep piping that same shape. And then you're just going to put a little bit more marshmallow in a piping bag. So a smaller amount than before, you don't need a lot for this bit. So okay, the seals have like a little nosy nuzzly, not sure what it's called, but um, I'm just going to snip a very small little tip on the ends of this piping bag. So about there, squeeze. Pipe a little nose, vary the shapes on different ones, and twizzle it, and take your piping bag away. A little nose isn't going to be quite like flat, so just dip your finger in some water and press on the nose, and then that will flatten it again. And then keep going, do that with all of your little seals. And now that you've done that, you just sieve them with even more of this corn flour mixed with icing sugar. Just make sure they are completely covered and it will really help them to dry out where it inks. So now we have a nice heavy dusting of this mixture um, and you can like use your fingers or a brush or something just to get it onto the sides of the seals because they aren't covered really. I don't know if I can face doing it because I, I don't, I think it's really common um, but you know like the feeling of cornstarch and icing sugar is like corn, corn flour, cornstarch is the worst. I can't even touch it with a brush, you know that, yeah if, I'm, if I've been pulling faces this whole time while sieving it's because I've been thinking about the squeakiness of it. Ugh. But yeah, so just get that all covered in your cornstarch mixture and leave it. Uh, depends on the humidity and stuff, and depending on how your how wet your marshmallow mixture was. Um, but you've got to leave it to all dry out. Um, so it'll take a little while. So now you're just going to leave this to all dry out and the time for that can vary a bit. You want it to be completely dry before you cut the um, seal arms out. Hello, I am back. Well you won't be able to tell but two days have passed um, since I've left these seals out to just, you know, kind of dry out a little bit so not so sticky. And so now they are looking good and time to snip, I can snip their little arms and then give them eyes and I got a little bit of ahead of myself and I've given some of these already some little arms. You can see on that one it's got some little armies and I'm just going to give some arms to all the rest of them. Use some scissors, it's really really easy. Oh I can't touch the corn flour. <laughs> yeah the hardest, oh no. Oh. These are really easy to make and the hard thing is just touching the corn flour. Okay so you're just going to cut <laughs> You're just gonna cut the sides like that. There you go, and you can see it's got some little arms now. So super easy, just some eyes. So there you have some festive Christmas seals and they are vegan and not too hard to make. And fluffy and amazing. Mm. I'm going to cut that bit of me eating because 
one off for ages. <laughs> but I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I hope it's been helpful and I hope you subscribe. Please subscribe and then you won't miss out on any future videos and lots more Christmas stuff, hopefully. Thanks for watching! Bye!